Hi students, today we're going to draw activity 156, the bracket. The activity introduces you to counterbores and countersinks. These are features that we can add to our 3D models after we create the shape. A countersink is a recessed hole that allows the head of a screw to be below the surface of the part. A counterbore is the same uh, type of feature, only it is for bolts. And so the counterbore is a cylindrically enlarged hole. When you scroll down and see this picture, you can see the difference in how they look. The second page has an orthographic and an isometric. And the first thing we want to notice is that this part is all in metric. And so we need to use a different template. Our, ha our handout shows us how to select the template for metric. So in Inventor, instead of clicking New Part here, we're going to click on the Application menu and we're going to choose New. It'll open our template window and on the left hand side we can choose Metric and on the right hand side we can choose Standard MM IPT. This will bring us into a new part but all of our units will now be in millimeters. And so as soon as my computer catches up with me, we're going to go ahead and look ahead. It tells us to sketch a triangle dimension the triangle and extrude the sketch. So this is just like those steps that we followed uh, for all of our 3D models. So as soon as this lets me, I'm going to create a sketch and then we will dimension it and then we will extrude it. Just waiting for my slow computer. It's so slow. Still waiting. Hey, wait, almost. <coughs> so close, so close. It's almost here. Yay, okay. So we start our sketch. And we're going to choose this particular sketch plane because we're dealing with width and depth. So we need a sketch plane that will allow us to create width and depth. I'm going to zoom out and draw a rectangle in this orientation. And then I will dimension this rectangle 156 by 50. These numbers are not made up, they are on the packet. And then we finish our sketch. We will then extrude our profile a distance of 87 as specified in the orthographic view. So here's our part. When we look back at the packet, you can scroll down and see that we are now in the right orientation and we have the right sizes. I do want to go ahead and save this, so I'm going to come up here and click on Save As. And I'm going to rename this Bracket. And I may already have one named Bracket, so I'm just going to say Yes, replace that one. The next step is to create the rectangles that will cut out these sections that are above what we call a flange. These are called flanges. And so we're going to cut out those rectangles. And before I do that, I have to choose... I need to flip this up where, it's, where we're looking at it right. Whoa. Okay, here we go. So we'll start a sketch on this face right here. And I'm going to project the geometry because this will give me edges. This will give me lines that I can then connect to with a coincident constraint. So coincident, coincident, and then dimension our height and our width. And those values are shown right here, 65 and 32. So this one should be 65, and this one should be 32. And then hold on to your seats. We're going to go in a different order from the activity sheet. Because activity sheet says now that you've drawn that, to cut that out. And then it says repeat the steps. Well, we're going to repeat the steps before we cut it out. That way we can cut both sides out at one time. So we're going to draw another rectangle on the other side. So rectangle, connect to the top, connect to the side. And instead of using dimensions this time, I'm going to use constraints. The equals constraint will allow me to make this line equal to this line. And the same constraint will let me make this line equal to this line. So I don't have to dimension those. I just have to use constraints. Finish our sketch. 
and do extrude, but this time we're going to do it as a cut right here. We have to select our profiles and we have to tell it to go all the way through the part and then say okie dokie. Save it so we don't have to redo any of that and let's look at our instructions. Now we're going to do the rectangle in the middle that forms the notch in our shape. So I'm going to draw a new sketch on this surface. I'm going to do a rectangle from here. Whoops, I missed. See how I missed up there? So I'm going to cancel that. I want to make sure I get that top edge. Very important that I get that coincident right there. Not sure if I did or not. Let's zoom in. Maybe I'm working too far out. So rectangle, make sure I get right here. Coincident. Okay, we're going to dimension this. We have a width of 50. We have, oh, see, I did not get that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to delete that rectangle and we're going to project our geometry again so that I have that edge. Now that I have that edge, I should be able to get coincidental. And when I dimension it, this should be 50. This should be 21. And I'm not making these numbers up. They're on the packet. This should be 29. All right, so if you look at the packet, you'll see those dimensions are shown, and I have dimensioned it as indicated on that drawing. And I am ready to finish the sketch and cut that shape into the part. So 50, 21, and 29, just as it's shown there, 50, 21, and 29, extrude as a cut this shape. And then we have to say, well, how deep does it cut into it? And if you look right here, it tells you that it cuts in 27. millimeters. So go back to Inventor. Right here our distance is 27 and say OK. Save it. Now we're ready to put the holes in the flanges. It tells you now that we're going to add counter bullets. We create points on each flange and we dimension. This is what it looks like. Sketch on the surface of the flange. Place a point on each side and dimension those points in this direction. So we're going to dimension from here to here and from here to here. Do the same thing on the other side and the same thing right here. This should be 16, and so should this 16. The other two, I believe, are both 23 and 23. Let's double check those values, 23 and 16. So we say finish sketch, and we click on the hole command. We're going to do a counter bore. And the reason we know the dimensions of the counterbore is up here in our orthographic, you have some symbols that you might not have seen before. The first one being this one right here. We recognize diameter 13. THRU means it goes all the way through the part. 2X means there's two of them, one on each side. And then we have this big shape right here that represents the counterbore. The counterbore, therefore, has a diameter of 18. And the depth of the counterbore is 10. So let's go back and look at this. If we choose counterbore, here we have the diameter of the counterbore. Here we have the depth of the counterbore. And here we have the diameter of the hole. Click OK. And spin our part around. And you can see that those holes have been created with the appropriate counterbores. And you can see that there. Okay. So everything looks great. We're ready to add the counter sink holes and you see them right here on the drawing here's their dimensions 15 from the top and 42 23 from the left edge and then here's their symbols diameter 13 through there's two of them 
the counter sink has a diameter of 20 and it's at a 90 degree angle. So let's look at what that looks like. We're going to create a sketch on this face. And I'm going to put two points on there. Point, point. And then I'm going to dimension those. Dimension from this edge to the point. Dimension from this edge to the point. Dimension from the top edge to the first point, and dimension from the top edge to the second point. Correct all the values, 23, 23, 15, and 42. Again, none of these numbers are made up. They are all right here on the packet. You can see them down here as well when we zoom into this picture right here. Okay. So once we have that done, we can finish that sketch, and we click on Hold again. This time, though, we want to choose Countersink. It's this one right down here. The diameter of the countersink was 20. 90 degrees is correct, and 13 is correct, so I click OK, and there my countersink is. Okay. So we're ready to save our part and move on to the addition of the fillets. Save. And let's look at the next step down here. So we have the countersinks. We're now going to add some features. We're going to select fill it with a radius of 12 millimeters. And we're going to click the four lower vertical lines that make the corners and the two edges that make the sides of the bottom of the slot. So let's look at that. Fill it. Radius right here is 12. Let me double check that. Yep, radius is 12, and then we select the four edges, this edge, this edge, and this edge. And you can either spin the part around or you can hover your mouse over this section, and it will highlight that back edge. We also need to choose this edge and this edge right here. Again, you can spin the part around or you can select it right there. Next, we need to add fillets to all the other edges that are all three millimeters. So we go back here, fillet radius now is three, and we look at our picture, and it's all the other edges that make up this shape. So I'm going to click on this edge, this edge, this edge. And we just walk our way around the part selecting these edges. I can click apply at any time so that I don't lose my work. So I can click apply. And then I can click, keep clicking and keep adding. And I believe the only edges that we do not apply a fillet to let me rotate this around and look, make sure I got all the back edges. Oh, I missed those two right there, so I need to do those. So fill it, make sure it still says three, this edge, and this edge. I don't think we do the bottom of the part. We usually don't fill it the bottom edges. So let me scroll up and double check the picture up here. Oh no, they do show fillets on the bottom edges, so we need to add those fillets on the bottom edges also. So I select my bottom edge and click OK. And now we have fillets on all the edges. And your bracket is complete. If all your edges have a 3 millimeter radius for a fillet. Looks great. Save your work and you are done.